Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Moving on to today's video. Yes, coming up this week, you know, for the entire week, you're going to get, you know, several things. And I know this is the first time, most of you, you know, um, in Jamaica and in the diaspora, this is the first time you're going to hear about corruption in the Jamaica Defense Force. Yes, alleged corruption. And look, if you look right there, you see a man. Yes, look at the, look at the man, not the man beside Sanders. His name is Donald Zeke's Phipps. Yes. So most of you would think that, um, you know, the police force, yes, is the most corrupt government entity in Jamaica. And they always say that, you know, the soldier them better and everything. So I have a cousin, I can call his name. He was a poli he was first he was a soldier, his name is Barrington Stewart. Yes man. Barrington Stewart, he was a soldier. And you know, he he was a soldier, then he became a special, then a regular, and he was a detective and he used to do eradication and then him leave. So you know say so him been through the entire thing. You understand? So Barry Ali used to tell me, say, hey, cuz, I'm telling you this, cuz. You know, him always say, cause corruption in our in our mil in our army, just as it's in our police force, and maybe even worse. It's just that they're more structured and disciplined, or they maintain information. You understand? Cause you have to understand how that place operate. So we are going to tell it um, this weekend about alleged corruption by the Jamaica Defence Force leadership and how they have done everything for this done. Yeah, man, for Donald Zeke Swips. Jamaica Defence Force. I know them destroy soldiers' life. Yeah, man. And you look right up there, say, you see three men who were in charge of the army. Yeah, man. One of, um, one of them, he was more Michael Manley than anything. Yes, man. Man in our military. So, one of the reasons why we have so many killings right now in our Jamaica, maybe, are some of these people that when them unleash on the Jamaican populace. You understand? So you're going to hear, you're going to hear straight a man who served in the military, been there, done that, and you're going to hear a lot of things, even about corrupt police. When you understand, or corrupt police will, um, prevent, um, you know, people were involved in a crime against um, members of the military because them, you understand, them get called, say, hey, tell them to back off because of this money and come and connected to the PMP. LGBTQ plus criminal organization. We are telling that. You understand? We haven't received. We haven't. We haven't. Re um, no one who's willing to tell us about any corruption that's going on right now in the police force and the military with this government. But you understand? So you're going to even hear about um, uh, what's his name, Patrick Bailey. Yes. Oh, yeah, man. Portia Simpson Miller, the former prime minister, also protected him. The rear admiral. Yes. And that was by Dr. Jess, um, Jess Pop Ford, the one that dead. Is a twin, you know. You're going to hear some things, some shocking things. You won't believe that this, uh, this is from the Jamaica Defense Force. You understand? And this is what happened. So when um, most of you are saying that the Jamaica Constabulary Force is corrupt, it is not as corrupt. It is, you know, it's cor uh, the, the, the corruption in Jamaica is just far and wide. And it's infected because as i said before and i'll say it again we as jamaican people we were cultured to be corrupt people yeah criminal minded and some of us escape and some of us still you know very sympathetic to criminals that's why some police don't like me yeah because i will call them out so 
So there are, there, so you know, there are a few reasons why the Jamaica Defence Force has been so skillful at keeping their corruption away from the Jamaican people over the years. And I tell you, you understand, the size and secrecy. The, J, the JDF is relatively small military with just over 5,000 active personnel. This makes it easier for them to keep a lid on corruption. As fewer people are involved and less likely to be whistleblowers. Additionally, the JDF is a secretive organization and it can be difficult for outsiders to get information about what happened inside because you know, you know they may drop the armor upon them, send them a red fence and all kind of thing. Them know of, you know, them, you know, criminal operate when criminal have power, they abuse it, you know. So if you are going against the green, you know, say, you know what time it is with them. You understand? So, yeah, so the JDF, it has lack of oversight. The Jamaica Defence Force is subject to different management level than other government agencies. For example, the JDF, yes, and most of you, most of you are of the belief that the Jamaica Defence Force is not corrupt. But we are going to expose some of their corruption, especially for Donald Zeke's FIPS. Yeah, man, we are going to expose it. I'm going to hear it for myself when I go shock. You understand? Uh, you know, you remember, you know, if shark, if fish come from in a bottom of a river, because in case the people don't know, you, you know that you have um, canals in a South Florida, uh, other parts of Florida, and you know that the canal did meet up with the sea. And you know that sometimes shark find themselves in the canals. Yeah, man, in a South Florida here, yeah. Shark, them find themselves in the canal with the manatees and them thing there. You know, so, Sharks in a, remember say shark in a salt water and it end up long in a fresh water. And they, you understand, it happens all the time because of weather. You know, them say climate change. So if the fish come back and tell us, hey, you know, a shark in a canal, you better believe fish. So what this soldier is telling us is what happened whilst he was a serving member of the Jamaica Defence Force. In a Jamaica Defence Force now, you know, when, yeah, when you exit the Jamaica Defence Force now, you have a sign you know, a legal binding document stating that, you know, you cannot release certain secrets over a period of time. You understand? I just saw it go. Unlike um, the Jamaica um, Constabulary Force, you just leave and that's it. Apart uh, apart from the people them who work at Special Branch. Special Branch police now, them totally different because them take an ex um, oath, apparently. They may not tell you anything, you know, but based on one and two little things. So we can't tell you now, based on our backgrounds. So, so, you know, the United States military and, you know, based on one and two little things, when you have secret clearance or any kind of clearance and this and that. Yeah, you can't, you, you cannot, you know, you know, you know, they don't have no time on it. You cannot. You cannot release any of the information that you will know about the military. Yes, because if you do that, you end up in a you end up in a brig. So you have to just keep them thing that close to your chest. It's just like when you sign a contract and them thing. So you go and join the military, and I see them when they come out. So you have to read the fine print them. Cause you can't say, uh, I didn't know. No, you signed it. I saw it go and them thing there with Uncle Sam. So certain things you can't when you when you have when you have certain clearance, and even when you work with the government, the federal government, one them thing there. Some things you cannot discuss you understand that, that you know yeah i just saw it go so once you cannot betray the trust of the government so public support you know the, the, the jamaica defense force is generally well respected by the jamaican people yeah so from where i go up on them thing they said when the people look up to these soldiers them different and them call them soldier you understand yeah soldier people treated different on them thing and soldier will live in a ghetto but most of the time you know when them live in a ghetto them kind of mix up. We are telling that, yeah. Cause like this brother who used to live on Settimo Street, opposite me with my auntie live and them thing there. You know, my brother now, when he, um, Bob, yeah, Bob alive and them thing there, my brother. Bob is a girl, is them tell me, you know. I mean, I asked him, Errol, the other day, if he number Eli and them thing, the same that I knew, yeah. You no, know, Bob good and them thing, he used to ride him bike. And Bob's brother was Errol. Errol was a soldier in a Jamaica Defence Force in the 70s. I youth them time, you know. I remember me attack from. 
and Errol you now, Errol and Copper them, Kang Few, Shaba and the whole of them in a friend. And them kill him them kill him once one Saturday night and one dance, and one stereograph dance. Because them come there and fire up shot and treat my soldier now. You understand people? I said, boy, I don't see man, man a soldier in Canada do that. And man him kill him just like that. And him and them are friend, you know. Because the man you understand what I'm saying, say, you know, boy, in farm of dead and they was kill Errol. And him and them are friend. Yeah, and that Sunday morning was I tell him man, you know, you would drop a pin in a drone son here. Everybody did love Errol, you know. You understand? Yeah. You know, so I just saw it go. Who does I tell you some things to, you know? You understand? So So the J the, the, yeah, so the J Jamaica Defence Force, yeah man, um, as we tell you, say is subject to a different management level, you know, than any other government agency. For example, the Jamaica Defence Force budget is not subject to parliamentary scrutiny and the JDF internal investigators are not open to the public. This lack of oversight makes it easier for the JDF to cover up corruption. Okay, so that's why them can't change the uniform and teeth and get fim and siphon off some of my money because there's no oversight. And I like in the US military, you know, where you have oversight. Yeah, you have Congress where oversight the money thing and then we have the Navy IG, you have the various IG, the Army IG, Air Force IG. So you can't do anything and get away because of them normally able to detect fraud. You know, and cause people to be charged criminally. So that's why, you know, people in the JDF them can't thief money and anything and get away with it. So public support. The JDF is generally well respected by the Jamaican people. This is partially due to the JDF role in disaster relief and national security. As a result, the public is less likely to be suspicious of corruption within the JDF. So because of them thing, you know, why Jamaican people have confidence in the Jamaica Defense Force. But I tell you that. Now from my youth, I grew up as well. So in addition to these factors, the Jamaica Defense Force has kept its corruption hidden by exploiting weaknesses in the Jamaican legal system. For example, the JDF has been accused of using its powers to intimidate witnesses and victims of corruption in the Jamaica Defense Force. Additionally, the Jamaican Defense Force has been accused of using its influence to interfere with criminal investigations. Despite the JDF efforts to keep its corruption hidden, several high-profile corruption scandals have involved Jamaican Defense Force personnel in recent years. For example, in 2020, a JDF soldier was charged with accepting bribe from drug traffickers. Additionally, in 2022, a JDF officers were accused of corruption of embezzling government funds. Them, they, them thing they you understand. And one of them, you know, them, them say my serial rapist and all them thing that a man were related to the, com the present commissioner of police, Anderson, and them, them trick him, send him to England because he get some promotion and them thing there. At the time, now them do that, they free up the place for the witness, them come forward. And by the time he return, them just kick him out of the force, the woman who's in charge now. So it's a trick, them trick him and send him on a course and get rid of him out of the Jamaica Defence Force. You understand? Yeah, that's how it go on them thing there. So, so these scandals suggest that corruption is a problem with only Jamaica Defence Force. Remember, I said Jamaica is a deal with you know? We as Jamaican, we were cultured to be criminals, criminal minded, criminal supporters, criminal enablers, and we supposed to be criminals though. So we're not supposed to, we're supposed to eat in farmer and love criminal. But we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel is the opposite. We love for in farmer and we eat criminal. So we're not putting a guy, putting a criminal guy on a pedestal. You understand? So the, the you know, we are telling now today, so the Jamaica Defense Force is as corrupt as the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And you are going to hear from this soldier. Yes, you're going to hear from this soldier. You understand? So so these scandals suggest that the corruption is a problem within the JDF. However, the JDF size and secrecy, you know, make you know lack make it lack oversight and public support have made it difficult to expose and prosecute corruption because of that, because of the size of the military, five thousand men and women. You understand? So however the allegation have you know have been widely publicized as allegation of corruption within the JCF. Yeah, so I just saw it go. You understand? So anything to do with the, um, the JCF, it's easy and out there on the street. You understand? 
So there are many reasons, that, you know, there are, many, there are few reasons why the Jamaican people may feel, believe that the Jamaica Defence Force is less corrupt than the Jamaica Constabulary Force. And one reason that the JDF is necessarily seen as a more professional and disciplined organisation than the JCF. The JDF is a military organisation whose members are subjected to, to strict military discipline, military code of conduct, um, in a military, you call it, uniform code of military justice. You don't want to get any article on them thing there, because you know, yeah, live in a military here in the United States of America. If you married and you cheat on your wife, you can charge your adultery, and that is like a criminal offence that has stayed upon with you forever. Because that depends on your DD 214. Yeah, chat, yeah. So when you're in the military in America, you can't cheat on your wife or your husband. And if, if them know them can, you understand. Even the woman who you cheat with, she... So that's why, you know, when you're in the military in America, so some of you young police who are in the military here, some of you may, may not even know. And eg ignorance is no excuse, because you go through all of the different classes and them things after you leave boot camp. So if you cheat on your wife when you're in the military here and um, the person where you cheat with, them can go report it to the chain of command and say, yeah, you know, say I'm married and yeah, me and him sleep and this and that and one and two little things. And yeah, and them can carry, uh, you know, um, them can carry a court martial or captain mass, you know, that, you know, them can do it either publicly and punish you publicly in front of the entire, you know, squad, yeah, or the entire division. Yeah, everybody see you, yeah, get punishment, whether they might take off your rank or anything. And then, or, you know, them kick you out or carry you the brig. Or them can, if them court martial, you know, that's how it's serious now. Because court martial now, you have five, you know, five people you try, you know, some big wig and them thing there. You don't even know them. And, you know, when the case try and, you understand what I'm saying? I've never been to one. You understand? The closest in the military, me, um, yeah, they will give you one thing when you cheat. If you are two minutes late or all kind of, you know, them give you tell them thing there. Because I just saw it go. You understand? But. You know, you never gonna further on that for me and them thing there. Two minutes late, I, I, I just saw them stay and them thing there. But hey, we give thanks because we learn a lot tonight. You understand? So, yeah, so you know, there are a few reasons why the Jamaican people believe that the Jamaica Defense Force is less corrupt than the Jamaica Constabulary Force. One reason is that the JDF is generally seen as a more professional and disciplined organization than the JDF, than the JCF. The J, and you know, say so it's a military organization. You understand? So, and the JDF is a military organization whose me members are, you know, subject to strict military discipline. So this discipline is seen as a deterrent to corruption. Another reason is that the JDF is less directly involved in law enforcement than the J JCF. The JDF's primary role is to defend Jamaica from external threats. Yeah, so while the JDF occasionally assists with law enforcement, it is not its primary function. This means that the JDF is less likely to contact the public than the JCF and therefore less likely to be involved in corruption. So finally, the Jamaica Defence Force is generally more respected by the Jamaican people than the JCF, that's the Jamaica Constabulary Force. So the Jamaica Defence Force is seen as a symbol of national pride and its members are often praised for their bravery and dedication. This respect may make the Jamaican people less likely to believe that the JDF is corrupt. It is important to note that there have been allegations of corruption within the Jamaica Defence Force in recent years. However, these allegations have not been as widely publicised as allegations of corruption within the Jamaica Constabulary Force. As a result, the Jamaican people may, may need to be aware of the extent of the corruption within the Jamaican Defence Force. And that's why I will tell, tell you people now. So overall, there are several reasons why the Jamaican people may believe that the JDF is less corrupt than the JCF. The reasons include that the JDF is perceived professionalism, discipline, lack of involvement in law enforcement, and the Jamaican people respect for the Jamaican Defence Force. However, it is essential to note that there have been allegations of corruption within the Jamaican Defence Force in recent years, and the extent of, extent of corruption within the Jamaica Defence Force may not be fully known to the Jamaican people. It is difficult to say definitely, definitively whether the Jamaican Defence Force is as corrupt as the Jamaican Constabulary Force or even more corrupt. The Jamaica Defence Force is a secretive organisation and getting information about what goes on inside 
isn't easy. Additionally, the Jamaica Defence Force is not subject to the same level of oversight as other government agencies, which make it easier for corruption to go undetected. However, several high-profile corruption scandals have involved Jamaica Defence Force personnel in recent years. For example, in 2020, a JDF soldier was charged with corruption. You know, if we call it bribe and thing there. So the scandal suggests that corruption is a problem within the JD, JDF. However, it is impossible to say how widespread is the corruption. Is uh, whether the Jamaica Defence Force is more or less corrupt than the Jamaica Constabulary Force. It is important to note that many honest and dedicated members of the Jamaica Defence Force are committed to serving their country. However, the Jamaica Defence Force force culture of secrecy and lack of oversight make it difficult to hold corrupt JDF personnel accountable. More corruption scandal would likely come to light if the JDF were subject to the same level of scrutiny as the Jamaica Constabulary Force. However, it is also possible that the Jamaica Defence Force is less likely than the Jamaica Constabulary Force. Ultimately, it is only possible to say for sure with more information. So we are telling them, you know, so you see thing where police the soldier do it too, you know. But it's just that most of the time you people don't hear. So this is it now. So um a JD, you know, a soldier held with more than forty thousand US appear in court. That was September thirteen. Yeah. So um a Jamaica Defence Force member was arrested for having more than forty thousand US in his possession at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay. And he made his first appearance in the St. James Parish Court. So the defendant, Dwayne Forbes, is charged with concealing criminal property, bringing criminal property into Jamaica, possessing, possessing criminal property, and transporting cash exceeding $10,000. Attorney at law Michael Emmons represented him, represents him. Allegations are that on August 8th, Forbes arrived on an incoming flight to Jamaica at the Sangsa International Airport and was checked by security personnel. During the routine check, US $40,000 allegedly found in his possession, which he could not account for and had not previously been declared. It is further alleged that during subsequent interrogation, Forbes stated that he had arranged to collect the money and deliver to an unidentified person in exchange for a percentage of the funds. So he was subsequently arrested and charged with the proceeds of crime at breaches. You understand? And so them say Emmons informed the court that he had documents to prove that his client had declared the money. The attorney also stated that he was in possession of the relevant documents relating to the case and would need some time to review them. So the judge um, put up the matter and extend Fab's bail. That was on October 3rd. So this is going to show you anything now. So we are telling you something now too. Yeah, so the same way like how that soldier get busted. Yeah, if them, you know, so we have an assistant commissioner of police. Yeah, him could have big still in blue. And one name, um, Gary McKenzie. We were cadets together. I see him thinking, do you like this a soldier? Him escort him, him a courier for a, a drugs, drugs dealer in a Florida. Yeah, he see him place in a Florida. Yeah, man, Gary McKenzie, assistant commissioner of police. Him used to do it. So we don't know if him still do it and him thing there. You understand? So, yeah, and our beef, yeah, people are saying, why keep that here? Because... The reason why we are telling all this, because we have certain principles about we, you know, as a person. You see, because we still behave and think as a police officer. If we know that somebody has planned to kill another person, we are tell the person what we say it wrong, and we tell the other person, hey, look, you know, say, you understand, I make you know, say, for you be on your pain, you're cues. He, uh, you understand, he, he knew, you know, that a guy, Christopher Brother J. Ebert, yeah. Um, and him that judge, yeah, big drug dealer and him thing there. Him get deported from Canada. Two times him got jail over Canada. So I don't know who gave him clean police record at Jamaica and him come to America and him have him an American citizen. Yes, all we know, uh, don't worry about that. You understand what I'm saying? So we don't know who a Jamaica gave him clean fingerprint record. So him an American citizen now, you know, Christopher Brother J. Ebert. A deportee, a man where two times him got jail at Canada and then him get deported to Jamaica. And he get clean police record and he migrate and him thing there. You understand? I know him alone. Whole heap of criminal from Jamaica live in America. You understand? So um, the bottom the bottom line the bottom line is that now with with Christopher Brother G. Ebert now is that we don't know who give him the clean fingerprint record. We know that him and Gary McKenzie, a friend, they were cadets together. 
Gary, um, he graduated after Gary McKenzie because I graduated before Christopher Brother J. Ebert, Daxton Reed, Courtney U Village, um, Andrew Pocky Thomas, and who else? I don't know who else from Gary Batch. Five of them as ex cadets. I did five of them thing. You understand? But I, I'm seeing them. And Daxton Reed. And, yeah, and Dark Brown. Devon Dark Brown, yeah. Dark Brown and them are batchmates and thing. All of them. So, that is what that is what happened. You understand? So we want to tell you that you know. So corruption in both both government entity, whether or not you want to believe it, and the army is not immune from having people who are corrupt. So this week now we're gonna give you a series. You're going to hear some mind-boggling things. You understand? I'm going to show you how Donald Zeke Swips is very powerful. You're going to hear it. Criminal enough, even when him that horizon. And you're going to hear how the PMP or them defend him and and destroy soldiers' lives. Yes. So I saw it go, that's why we tell you said the PMP LGBTQ plus is a criminal organization. And we're not hey, we're not holding the ball to nobody and them thing there. Now. So we just tell you as it is. All we want back, we just want back with Jamaica. That's it. You understand? We don't care. We want it back from both political party. From you know, so one of them is a political party, the other is a criminal organization. And we want it back from them. Have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica Young Police Channel out.